Open champion Cameron Smith is the first player in the top 10 in the world of golf to join the contentious Live Tour. The organization, which is headed by Australian legend Greg Norman and supported by the public investment fund of the Saudi government, made the news public just a few days ago. Additionally, Mark Leishman will be joining Smith within the next Live Tournament. So, stay tuned to find out all the inside information that you certainly do not want to miss. First up, Cameron Smith and Mark Leishman have officially left the PGA. PGA Tour for the Live Tour. But why? Well, let's take a look at all the details. Open champion Cameron Smith is the first player in the top 10 in the world of golf to join the contentious Live Tour at the fast approaching September 2nd through 4th event being held at the International Golf Club outside of Boston. The 29-year-old Australian, who has been connected to Live Golf for months, will make his series debut. Smith, following the news of his new career endeavor, revealed that part of his decision to join the breakaway circuit was driven driven by the financial rewards, though he would not confirm rumors that he signed on for a sum around $145 million. Now, before he announced his decision, but rumors were swirling online, Smith was grilled after winning the 150th Open Championship not so long ago at St. Andrews, and reacted pretty angrily when he was asked if he would be joining Live Golf at his press conference. Smith replied at the time, I just won the British Open, and you're asking about it. I think that's not good. Then he added that his team is concerned about those specifics. Now, Smith isn't the only face in the Live Tour. Fellow Australian player Mark Leishman has made the jump, along with American golfers Harold Varner III and Cameron Tringale, rising Chilean star Joaquin Neiman and Indian Anirban Lahiri. Following this, Live Golf CEO Norman hailed the additions as a significant day for the fledgling league. Following the announcement, Smith will no longer be able to play for the international team in the President's Cup at Quail Hollow next month as a result of his defection. Likewise, Leishman, who has had an illustrious career that includes six PGA Tour titles and a second-place finish at the 2015 Open to South Africa's Louis Oosthuizen, is entitled to the same treatment. Even though some of the best and biggest names in golf have joined the Saudi-backed league, the Saudi government continues to accuse the league of engaging in sports washing. Players including the very influential Tiger Woods and Rory McIlroy have staunchly supported remaining on the PGA Tour and urged golfers to do the same, which the Live Tour, specifically Norman, really Really does not like. Now, we thought it would be only right to recap on why the Live Tour is so controversial and where the money comes from that is funding the entire thing. First things first, what exactly is the new golf league? Well, the Live Golf Invitational Series is produced by Live Golf. The league CEO and commissioner is two-time major champion Greg Norman, and he aims to provide the top players in the world with an alternate venue to the PGA Tour. Furthermore, the Public Investment Fund of Saudi Arabia, one of the richest sovereign Sovereign wealth funds in the world, with an estimated worth of $600 billion, is the financier of Live Golf, the first of the eight tournaments in the Live Golf Invitational Series 2022 schedule, will take place within Portland, Bedminster, Boston, Chicago, Bangkok, Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, and Miami, as of right now. Now, as we mentioned earlier, Live Golf's funding comes from Saudi Arabia's PIF, which is contentious to say the least. The Saudi government, which has violated countless human rights, uses the PIF as its financial arm. For example, the death and dismemberment of Jamal Khashoggi, a Washington Post reporter and outspoken opponent of the Saudi regime, was the most notorious incident in recent years, highlighting just how backwards and dangerous the Saudi government is. To try and cover up their crimes, the Saudi government has made significant investments in sports leagues and events, from the Premier League of Soccer to the WWE, in an effort to repair its image. This strategy is known as sports washing. Sports washing is frequently used used as a propaganda tactic to divert attention away from the public's infractions and abuses. So, what format is it in? Over 54 holes, a stroke play competition will pit the 48 players in the field against one another. There is no cut and a shotgun start will be used. Golfers will all start playing simultaneously. Additionally, the 48 players are divided into 12 four-man teams that are chosen by a team captain in a draft prior to the competition. Now another, more positive golf news, Rory McIlroy recently won a huge sum of money and he definitely deserved it. For Rory McIlroy, winning the Tour Championship in grand fashion and earning $26 million for defeating world number one Scotty Scheffler in the decisive final round was a huge accomplishment and much needed. However, not everything is great for the sport. The world number two, Cameron Smith, is about to leave the game, leaving McIlroy with a knot in his stomach and stating that he hates what Live Golf's development is doing to the sport. Now, following his win, McIlroy
McElroy, who has been the face of the opposition to live and essential to PGA Tour changes for the upcoming season and beyond, didn't hold back after his victory and alluded to genuine feelings of anxiety ahead of a confrontation with numerous other defectors he will face at the DP World Tour's BMW Championship in England in the middle of September. McElroy, a former Ryder Cup partner of Lee Westwood and Ian Poulter, will be competing against up to 18 live players, and he's unsure of how he'll manage it. I think it's important to stand up for what you believe in, and I feel strongly about this. I definitely do, McElroy affirmed of his adamant position to live. I hate the damage it's causing to golf. I abhor it. I do, really, to the point where I won't be able to bear to see 18 of them when I visit Wentworth in a few weeks. That doesn't feel right to me at all. Before the Tour Championship, McElroy disclosed that he had contacted Smith after the Australian won the British Open to let him know about the approaching PGA Tour changes while rumors of his prospective live departure were circulating. Smith, however, continued to dismiss the rumors. But now, we know that he has officially joined the Live League, leaving many pro golfers and fans shocked and saddened. In other Live Golf news, Cameron Tringale also announces his participation in Live. In recent news, Cameron Tringale made the decision to join Live Golf rather than renew his PGA Tour membership for the upcoming season. Now, the 35-year-old has never claimed a victory, but he has placed second four times and won more than 17 million US dollars, 25 million Australian dollars, in prize money with the PGA Tour. However, it appears the money from the Live has enticed yet another player. Tringale posted on Twitter, after much thought, prayer, and discussions with trustworthy advisors, I have decided not to extend my tour membership for next year and join Live Golf. Tringale, Australian Cameron Smith, and Harold Varner III are among the upcoming group of golfers who intend to desert to the new Saudi-sponsored Live Golf Series, according to multiple media sources. The group is anticipated to compete in the Live Tournament outside of Boston the following week, together with Australian Mark Leishman, Chilean Joaquin Neiman, and Indian Arnaban Lahiri. And and finally, if you weren't already aware, in light of Liv's takeover, a federal court decision presents a major dilemma for golf. Three golfers who joined the Saudi-backed Liv Golf will not be permitted to participate in the PGA Tour's postseason, according to a federal judge in California. After listening to the attorneys for both sides for almost an hour, U.S. District Judge Beth Labson Freeman made her ruling in San Jose about two weeks ago. The amount of money the golfers were assured by signing up for Liv, a crucial factor in the case, Freeman claimed did not make her believe they would suffer irreparable injury. Freeman rejected the three suspended golfers' request for a temporary restraining order. In letters sent last month to the PGA Tour, Taylor Gooch, Matt Jones, and Hudson Swafford each argued that they should be permitted to play anywhere they choose. Each of them said, I'm a free agent and independent contractor. They are two of the 10 athletes who, together with Phil Mickelson, filed an antitrust complaint against the PGA Tour last week. Golfers attorney Robert Walters highlighted that due to the huge monetary prospects, this would be their chance to compete on a large playoff stage, essentially the Super Bowl of golf. When players were asked if they might have been able to wait until the end of the PGA Tour season to leave for the new tour, Freeman retorted that the Live Tour's earning potential was also excellent, drawing many big names away. According to Greg Norman, CEO of Live Golf, there were only 48 seats available, and Walters contended that they would have been filled if he did not act, just like the other big names. And there you have it. Every Everything you need to know about Cameron Smith and Mark Leishman leaving the PGA Tour and joining the highly questionable Live Tour. Now, make sure to let us know your thoughts down below, and as always, thanks for watching.